Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we show you the very expensive draw kit that we invested in for our brand new kitchen. This one here. And we put together a cabinet that has some special challenges. And this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace, but more about that later. Twenty seconds left. Ireland can win if they get a try. New Zealand's in front, but not by much. This is hard to watch. Oh come on! Oh, big hit. Full time. Come on. Thirty-seven. You have impeccable timing. Nice. Easy. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> Looking good, Jess. Oh man, before moving down here to Nelson, we lived in apartments. And I don't think Jess really used tools at all. And now look at her, out there in colorful cotton overalls using a Milwaukee ish trimmer. <laughs> this, um, if this symbolizes your relationship with, um, I don't know, yeah, fill in the blanks. Should put it outside, give it some fresh air. Needs a dust mask. So we've got all the cabinets in that one wall there, but these cabinets here are for the other wall, and they are a little bit tricky because they have the cooktop within them on the center in between the two cabinets. Now I started trying to explain to Ray how we're gonna do it, and I sort of watched his eyes glaze over. So rather than trying to explain it, I'm just gonna do it and you'll see it come together. It'll make sense when it's done. Take 152. <laughs> Alright, let me try and explain this. <laughs> this isn't because it's complicated, it's because it's hard to explain. It's pretty simple uh, logic behind this. Basically, we're going to have a cooktop on top of two cupboards, and it needs ventilation. And for the ventilation to work, it needs cold air to come up from the bottom, and the hot air that is generated by the induction hob needs to expel somewhere. And this is how we're building the cabinet to make that work. Expel, is that the right word? Expel? Extract? Exhaust? Yeah. Ask the foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> so this little void here, we're about to screw in place, leads down to a hole the same size as this at the bottom that Ray just cut out. That's an air gap. Kickaboo! So the challenge of getting good ventilation here is you also need to have a good structural cabinet, right? A cabinet that's going to hold a bench top and hold all the drawers that we want to put underneath. And we wanted the drawers to be the same as they are elsewhere in the kitchen. Yep. You want to hold it differently? Yeah. I'll just hold it awkwardly like this. <laughs> well, we, we can work this way. No, that's right. Don't forget to breathe, Scott. <laughs> so that's the center. Yeah. yeah. Cool, I can take it from there. Cool. There you go. So the plywood that Ray's been cutting goes under here like that. And that creates an enclosed area. And then you have a vent down here that the cold air will be sucked up. And then we're going to put a nice router slot through here that will allow air to escape. And then all the hot air produced by the fans of the induction cooker will have somewhere to escape. And it won't get all in the drawers. Did we forget about that? No, it's just I don't have the upcut router bit to make a nice clean, because it's a cut you're gonna see. Um. And it has to be reproduced on the drawer front as well, because the drawer front's gonna come all the way up. Do you think this is the, um, the part that, that sucks, or did it? That would be the exhaust. Or gifts. 
This will be the suction part. It pulls up the cold air. Right. And this will be the hot air expelled out. Because the fan's like hungry for air, so it's like rah, grabbing the cold air from down below. And the hot air rises, right? So it should go out that way. That's quite nice. You're cooking here and you get warm knees. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, hey? I figured it out yesterday. I figured out how to put the draw rails in and where they should go. And also the sizes. Now I, we, have invested in something that's very expensive, but I'm hoping will help us a lot. This draw system. This is Nova Pro Scala by Grass. That's the brand. And I got it via Hayfley, New Zealand. But it means you don't have to build draw boxes because this, this is the main component tree of the draw box. And it all starts with the rails. So let's put them on. Now, all we need to do is cut some plywood to go into the draw pieces. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. As well as being a sponsor of the channel, Squarespace is a website building platform that allows you to stand out and succeed online. We built our website on Squarespace. If you don't have a website, I highly recommend you get one because it's like an online business card. Squarespace makes it super easy to set up, so you don't really have to know coding because they have drag and drop functionality. Get your media, get your photos, drag it into one of their beautiful templates. They have hundreds of templates to choose from. And then you'll have a great website in no time. They have portfolios and galleries to showcase your work. They have e-commerce tools built right in. So if you're selling a product, Squarespace is a great place to do it. You can even set up your own custom domain name all inside Squarespace. They make it really easy, that's the bottom line. But you don't have to take my word for it because they also offer a free trial. So you have nothing to lose. But then once you're ready to actually launch your website, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry. And then that way you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Cheers to Squarespace for supporting the channel. Things are definitely growing. And Jess has been growing all of these things here in a little seed house. And it's all coming up nicely. So these drawers do go together fairly easily. But one thing that I've picked up by building this kitchen for the first time, is the importance of accuracy. Getting accurate, repeatable cuts seems to be the key to everything. And because of that, I can see how people who commit to building a kitchen as a, as a business will need to really invest in high quality machinery because it's all good for me to do one kitchen here for myself on this table saw with this outfeed table and track saw, it's pretty, pretty good. It just takes a long time. Like it took us most of yesterday to cut all these draw pieces, despite the fact that we're using this system where you don't even need to cut the sides of your draw boxes. They're already made. It still takes time. But with that being said, let's take a look at exactly how these boxes go together. I put a couple together yesterday and I put them in and it kind of showed me that maybe I don't need to be as accurate as I thought. There's a bit of flex in these things. They're a little bit more forgiving than I, than I first thought. 
So as Ray and I cut things yesterday, we just labeled them all. These are all the bases. This is how our drawer system works. Skinny one at the top, slightly big one in the middle, and then a big one at the bottom. Anyway, speaking of the plans, um, I'll put a link in the description to the person who designed them. Mark Williams Joinery Design, based in Australia. Because if you plan to do any cabinetry project, I highly recommend having a set of plans like this. It has helped me so much. So yeah, I'll chuck Mark's email address in the description below if you want to get some plans drawn for your cabinetry. Speaking of the description, I always have links to tools that I use, clothes that I wear, like the work clothes that I wear. So if you've ever wondered about that stuff, they're usually listed in the description below. So the draw's pretty easy. Slots are nicely like that, and then you go for those screw holes to hold it. The width of the back board and the base are the same. So they just lock in like that. And that's pretty much the draw box. Top bottom, here we go. This is the fun part. This just slots in. Look at that! Easy as that. Oh. I mean, look at that. It's mint. I've seen cabinet makers do this on videos. I don't know why they do it, but here we are. Why did they do this? I think it's because it's a lot of fun. Oh man, I'm pooped. Um, I want to thank you guys for being patient with me. Uh, obviously I'm not building a start to finish kitchen in this video or any of these videos. So this is my first time building a kitchen and I want to come out with a really professional one at the end. So what I lack in experience I have to make up for in patience. And I'm getting there. These fronts clip on, these have got these little brackets that clip on, that screw into the back of your faceplate and then it clips into this unit. So that, that's pretty easy to attach. Uh, but I'm gonna do vertical grain timber plywood, this stuff, and I want the grain to be continuous down the three different drawers. So it's going to be a bit of 
mucking around in the next episode or the one after that, uh, getting that right, and then attaching it to these drill fronts. <sighs> and this sucker here is dishwasher. It's one of those integrated ones. So that'll have the vertical timber on it. I might make it match this cupboard so all that grain will be matching. And this here, we're going to have to come up with a different drawer system around the sink. Because if the sink's going to go here with the plumbing below it. But yeah, oh, it's coming along nicely. Um, in maybe the next episode, I'm going to do a track saw review of the Milwaukee track saw, the cordless one. So if you have any questions about that, please put them below. Um, like I said earlier, there's things in the description, tools I use work gear I wear. Patreon if you want to support us. Thanks to our sponsors who support us already and a big thank you to you at home who watch my videos because without you none of this happens. Catch you in the next exciting episode.